I required a lot of grace this morning because I had to write a message. I had to wake up early, pray to the Lord, write a message which I couldn't write and ask the Lord, okay, help me. Give me your grace. I need your grace right now. Honestly, I needed his grace to write this message. I needed a, his grace to do this other piece of thing which I couldn't even tell you about right now. But I'm just telling you, any believer that does not employ or deploy the grace of God, any believer who does not operate by the grace of God is a limited believer. Is a limited believer. I repeat it. If you do not stand out of the way and let grace flow, then you are a limited believer. You are walking like a mere mortal. The people of this world, they rely on their skills and their understanding and their knowledge according to the physical mind construct of this world. That's how they operate. But you as a believer is not meant to operate so. If you rely on your own skills, your own understanding, your own experiences to walk this life, you will walk it, I repeat again, you will walk it like a mere mortal. You will walk it like a mere mortal. Self hinders grace. Self is like the boulder that is hindering the flow of the rivers of grace. You see, the thing is, it's when men reach the end of themselves that they cry out to God for grace. And I'm talking about believers as well. But it doesn't need to be that way. Let me repeat this thing again. If you walk without grace, it's not just saying I'm walking by grace and then you walk around or run around like a headless chicken. You run around toiling like the men that were under curse when you're not under curse but under blessing. That is a man that does not understand grace. I repeat it. That is a man that does not understand grace. A man who understands grace employs and releases grace. He releases grace into his ministry. He releases grace into his relationships. He releases grace into his finances. Grace is outside of yourself. It's not, it's not your skills. It's not your understanding. I said the other day on Sunday, I was saying, the Lord has made me to forget my skills. People looked at me like, why would you want to forget your skills? Honestly, I forgot my skills and I just walk in grace. And do you know what? In my territory, grace is opening doors every, everywhere. It's not by, it's not, listen, it is not my skills. It's not my skills. I said to the Lord, I cannot do this. I cannot do this. You see, the men that understand that they are weak without the grace of God, people like Moses, people like Paul, those men who understand that they are weak without the grace of God, they're the ones that grace flows for them. Grace flows for them. Because they're not standing in the way. They're not trying to do things by their own effort. If you are doing it by your own effort, that is not it. Grace works without your effort. Okay, you might be looking, you might be thinking, okay, but doesn't that mean I need to go to work? I didn't say don't go to work. But when grace is operating, you understand that there is something that is spiritual that I cannot see, that is operating, is operating outside of the physical realm. I can't see it, but what I see is the manifestation of the fruit of grace. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you're going for that interview, you're going for that contract, you're going for that job, you're looking for that husband, you're looking for that wife. If you're going to use your limited understanding, your limited physical mindset, your limited eyes, you will not see your husband, you will not see your wife. It's by grace. Okay, let me give you an example. When the Lord said, you're going to marry, I won't go into the whole story. When he said, you're going to marry, I said, finally, I said, Lord, if that's what you will for me, it is good. Therefore, do your will. 
I didn't know where wife is coming from. And I didn't really send. Why didn't I send? Because I was operating with the God of grace. The God that is able to make all things possible. The God that is able to connect someone on one side of the earth to another person on the other side of the earth. If I was relying on my own understanding and skills, do you know what I would have done? Maybe I would have looked at dating sites. Oh, maybe, maybe let me see if I can help God. That's how Abraham tried to help God. He said, okay, it's taken a long while for this child to come. Okay, maybe, maybe you're right, Sarah. Let me sleep with this handmaiden. Listen, grace is without limit because our God is without limit. Let me say something to you. You see, grace, grace is like, you know what a parachute does? When you jump out of a plane, if you don't, if you don't uh, release a parachute, what happens? Physically, you're likely to fall and die, right? Physically, you're likely, I didn't say God can't stop that from happening, I'm saying that physically, by science, you are likely to fall because of gravity at speed, you are likely to hit the ground at whatever velocity, and you are going to die. Yeah? So why do you release a parachute? You release a parachute to what? To save your life. But in the special forces or in the military, you don't just release the parachute to save your life and to keep you. You also use it to guide you to the destination. Grace is just like the parachute. Grace is released. It protects you. It keeps you. And it guides you to God's desire will and goals for your life the word of god says that he prepared the good works that you should do for his glory so let me get this right if he prepared the good works that you should do for his glory before the foundation of the world do you think the god who created the heavens and the earth and didn't need your counsel to do it do you think he's relying on your effort to get you to that goal to get you to the end of your destiny, to get you to the end of your ministry, to propel you. No. There is a power that propels, and it is called grace. Throughout, in, throughout the entire Old Testament, you see men looking for grace. That means they understood that by themselves they were unable, that by themselves they could not do it. They were looking for the grace of God. I like what Paul says. Paul said, in my weakness, I will glory in my weakness. Why did he glory in his weakness? He said, because when I'm weak, I am strong. That is someone who understood grace. Is when, when, many a times, you see, the problem is, is that believers, God is still trying to skim the world from up of us. We still want to be the, 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 the main man in this thing or you know what is my skills or is my education or is this or is that and you even see that that boasting you even see that boasting when it comes to faith listen before you receive faith by grace you were a sinner i don't care if you commit i don't care if you were in the in the brothel or you were a drunkard or you were smoking marijuana even if you were doing none of those things you were a sinner you were a sinner. The only reason why you were saved was because of the grace. The only reason why you had faith is because of grace. So there's no place for boasting. There's no place for boasting. Now, Ephesians 2, 8, 10, 8 to 10, for example, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that what? Not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It is the gift of God. Grace is a gift which he is prepared to give. He has given it to you according to his exceeding riches. He has given it to you because you are in Christ. So you know what I'm going to say? Just say to the Lord, Lord, I'm not going to rely on myself because myself is limited. But you are unlimited. Lord, I release grace. Amen. Say after me just a minute. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your grace. I receive your grace. I operate by your grace. And I release grace into every area of my life, including my body, my finances, 
my marriage, my relationships, in all my doings, the working of my hands, the walking of my feet, my speaking, my thinking, cause grace to flow through it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Moses was unsure and he had to check. In Exodus chapter 33, verse 12 to 13, it says, Exodus chapter 33, verse 12 to 13. It says, And Moses said unto the Lord, See thou sayest unto me, bring up this people. What is he saying? This is a hard thing. Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. You see, this is why I said, a man who understands, okay, let me give you an example. Grace doesn't just lift someone from the ash heap and seat them amongst princes. God, grace doesn't just lift you from the bottom and seat you at the top. Do you know there's many people right now who are in the middle of where God wants to take them? But because they're relying on their own self, they're staying in the middle. But you see, this is, okay, let me give you an example. They have reached one million or 10 million, and as a believer, they said, I, I've done it. <laughs> I'm good, I'm good, I've done it, I've done it. I can retire now, I'm good. Listen, but they're in the middle ground, or even here. Because God, what God is calling for that person is, that person should have 100 million. But because all they can see is, oh, by my effort, my skills, I have got here. They think that is the end for them. It's not. God wants to, by grace, take them to the full journey. That's why I said, before the foundation of the world, he prepared the good works that you should do for his glory. Because you're going to need that grace. You're going to need grace to operate in every area of your life, to operate for you to reach that destiny. You can't even serve God. You can't even serve God acceptably. You can't even serve God reverentially. You can't even serve God with godly fear without grace. You can't even walk a righteous life without grace. That's why I said any believer who is not walking in grace, you have automatically limited yourself. yourself. I, listen, that's why Paul said, I count ought it all dumb. I count all the knowledge, all the understanding, all the experiences I've had on this, in this world. He said, I count it all dumb next to the knowledge of Christ. Why? Why? Believers, we have to come out. God has been teaching me for a long time. He's still continuing. I'm sure he's teaching all of us. You have to come out of this worldly mindset Okay, you may have three degrees. You may look good before men. But I guarantee you, all the things that you have gained in this world and the understanding of this world and the knowledge and the skills of this world, I guarantee you, it will not get you to your final destination. It's not going. It's not going to. Because just to finish the work, just to live the abundant life which God died for you to live, just for you to live the overflowing life that God died for you to live. Even for you to have the overflowing health, the overflowing strength that God died for you to, live, to have. You need grace. You need grace. So I said, it's not just when you are finding things exceedingly difficult, you employ grace. Employ grace always. When you say to God, listen Lord, for me to walk this life with you, I need grace. For me to fulfill this work, this assignment you have given me, I need grace. 
Trust me, you will start to see grace flow for you. Moses understood the situation. You want me to lead six million men, excluding women, excluding children. Israel could have been almost 12 million men. Was he, was he a king before? Had he led a nation? He even understood his weakness. That's why he said, unless your grace, if your grace is with me, let it guide me. Let it bring me into understanding. Let me tell you something. Grace is the power of every believer. Grace gives you strategies. Grace helps you to, oh my karabaka shaka. Grace helps you to pass your exams. It helps you to write your thesis. Grace helps you to minister. Grace helps you to get money. When grace is working around you, huh, you become like a magnet for every good thing. Men can't understand it. They can't see it. They'll be working for you. They'll be working for you. Grace. Grace, fly your plane. It lifts you up. It protects you. It fights for you. That's the grace of God. Noah found grace. Why did it say Noah found grace? Listen, you may read Genesis 6, 9 and think, how did Noah find grace? He said, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation and Noah walked with God. And Noah walked with God. So you may say, oh, why would he need to find grace? He walked with God. The Lord said he was righteous and blameless in all his generation, but I can guarantee you that he was still a sinner. He was still a sinner. And what was God coming to do? Destroy the whole earth. Was he not? Why did he come to destroy the whole earth? Because it's, a, it's spirit. Yeah? It's in turmoil. Because of the sin on the earth. And yet Noah and his family, they were all sinners. It says, but we are at all as unclean thing and all our righteousness as what? Filthy rags. Isaiah 64, 5, 64, 6. And Romans 3, 10 to 12 says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. And then it says in Genesis 6, 7 to 8, chapter 6, verse 7 to 8, it says, And the Lord said, I will destroy man, whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found what? Grace. Grace is outside of yourself. Grace is not... Is not your good works. Grace is God moving. That's why I said that any believer that is not walking by grace, you are walking like a mere mortal. You are walking in the limited sphere when you are supposed to be operating by the unlimited sphere. When you deploy grace, when you operate in grace, you don't need to think. I, I don't want to give you too many examples. Even today was full of grace. Every day is grace. We live by grace. I have too many, I have too many testimonies, I'm sure you all do. But what is the Lord saying? Don't just deploy grace, don't just release grace, don't just ask for grace when you are at wit's end. No. Deploy that grace now. I speak grace over our trip to Nigeria. I release grace. Everything that we need, everything, everything that we need, the Lord shall provide it for us by grace. Not just the work, not just the money, not just the tickets, the laborers, the faithful laborers. Everything that we need, Lord, you will deploy by grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Gideon understood. Sorry, Pastor David. That's by grace as well, because Pastor David will call me off the altar. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Gideon understood. I said it again. Let me say something to you. you. You may think that you have succeeded in life. And that is the problem for many, many believers is they think they've succeeded in life and they don't even see where God wants to take them. You see, that's the problem. When you've got like the white picket fence, the beautiful husband, the beautiful wife, the beautiful children, the lovely cars, the lovely houses, most believers stop there. Or they, they've got one billion, they stop there. 
Because they don't understand that the God without limit, he's looking and he's like, okay, that's pretty good. But do you know that you're still at stage two? I want to take you to stage 20. But you're at stage two, you're happy there. But I want to take you to stage 20. You're good there. That's what you think. It's not enough. You see, it's when a man understands, hey, I can't do it. I'm not able. These skills are not. That's why God, listen, when God is you, wants, to see you, wants to use you many times, right? Whether it be finances, whether it be power, whether it be winning souls, whether it be this, ministry, whatever it might be, business, whatever it might be, do you know what? He will bring you to the end of yourself. He will bring it to the end of yourself. When you come to the end of yourself, you say, Lord, <laughs> I know I'm a son of God, but Lord, my understanding is too limited for this part. I need your grace. Grace starts to carry you from here to here. I don't know about you. If you want to do things by, let me give you an example. If you want to do things by effort, you keep on doing it. I will do it by grace. Let me explain what I'm saying to you. When you walk by grace, divine speed is happening. When you walk by grace, divine power is happening. When you walk by grace, open doors are happening. When you walk by grace, you are being propelled. When you're walking by grace, you're being kept. I've seen people trying to book appointments, six appointments. They have to do it in two days. But by grace, listen, you heard what I said. I said, Lord, I can't do, Lord, I can't do this. I need your grace. I need your grace. I need your grace. Two hours. The appointments that people take, take two days. Even my, my manager knows it. Two hours. Brah. They came back to back. So what do you think I'm going to do? Do you think I'm going to toil and work by my own effort? When God will do it by his grace and do it speed. Oh my gosh. Believe all that. Don't be, don't be limited. The power has been given. That grace has been given to you. You are in Christ. According to his exceeding riches, that grace is overflowing for you. And I said it's without limit. It's not today. Even if you see overwhelming grace today, you can ask tomorrow. Because it's still there. It's without limit. Gideon understood. He said, I am, he said, my father's house. He said, and he said unto him, oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Listen, these are great people. Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh. And I am the least in my father's house. He's saying, I can't do it, but you can. And the Lord said unto him, surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Does, it, does the Bible say that Gideon had super strength for Holy Ghost falling on him like Samson? Does the Bible say that Gideon was a, he was a warrior, a soldier? No, the Bible says he was a mighty man of valor. But he didn't see it, and he didn't know it. All he knew is, Lord, I can't do this great task that you're asking me to do. But Lord, if you release your grace, it will be done. And he said unto him, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. And what did he, he found grace. It's grace that routed the Midianites. It's not Gideon and the, the 300. How can it be the Gideon and the 300? coming against a whole army we must live by grace I've got one last minute so I'm gonna say quickly Jesus when Jesus came he brought the grace the grace of God to the forefront Jesus is full of grace because he's God grace comes from God not from Satan grace can't God can't Satan can't employ grace Men can't employ grace. No matter how much you read, no matter how much you learn, you, you yourself don't have. You have grace in you, in your spirit. That's not what I'm saying. But you don't have the power. You have the power to release it, but it's not of yours. Although, in the true sense of it, it belongs to you. Because everything the Father has is mine. That, but that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that grace is something that the Lord, He releases for you. To get something done. It's grace of God. When he was full of grace and truth. God is truth. And he is grace. You didn't deserve for him to come for you. You didn't deserve it. You didn't deserve it. You're all sinners. 
You didn't deserve it. Grace in itself is the working of God and it's undeserving. You didn't deserve it. But layered up in grace is love and power. John 1, 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us and we beheld his glory, the glory as, only, as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. I can't go to the rest. Time is gone. But I want you to know this. The Lord wants you to understand this. For me and for every believer. God has given us the grace. So are you going to walk by that power? Or are you going to continue to walk by your physical power? It is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. It is not by might nor by power. So no matter how powerful or how mighty or how knowledgeable or how wise you look on this earth, no matter how men praise you or do not, it does not matter. Even if they chastise, even if they look at you despise and despise you, it does not matter. If you employ grace from today, if you release grace, what you have found difficult to do in your business, in your career, if you're looking for promotion or you're looking for health, I guarantee you, grace will bring it to you speedily and effectively. And you will know that it was not of yourself, but it was of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.